All right, we're on a larger property. A lot of pipes going in the ground. A lot of pipe. We're competing against trees. And we're going to win. We're going to win because we're going to have a lot of airspace. And any roots that try to grow in our system are going to get air pruned. Check this out. That is a full frame screaming demon. That thing's badass. This thing is really gonna rip, man. This thing is truly, truly set up to move an insane amount of water. Always make your sump pit deeper than your yard drain trench. Now we got the luxury of having a track hoe. But DIYers, you want to definitely get your sump pit deeper than your trench. You want the trench to be dry. You want the water to fall into the sump trench. That's why we have so many different sump units that are pre-built, ready just to be dropped in by the DIY. Whatever height you need, I'm pretty sure we got it. And we've sent out some crazy tall ones, too, for people that had some, you know, unique situations so again we're pretty deep here but we brought our screaming demon full frame which is uh, 30 inches tall so we're we're 30 inches deep right here All right, with the Screaming Demon, you do need two people, whether it's a duplex or a single unit. They're just very heavy. We have an all cast iron half horse pump in these things. I mean, that is a monster power plant. You just need help when it comes to setting these. So that's the only part of the job that I really feel you do need two hands, two sets of hands. You definitely need to have a neighbor, friend, family member, somebody lend a hand. Now, Valentin and Francisco, they went ahead and they dug the sump pit. Before they put in any fabric, they put this unit in the sump pit. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Dig the sump pit. Do not line it with fabric. Put the unit in the sump pit. If for any reason it is not at the right height and you need to adjust it, you pull it out and you adjust it, you set it back in. You're looking to get it just right, and I'll tell you why. The pit has to be lower than your trench because you don't want to leave water in your trench. You want the water to fall down into the sump pit, so your trench is going to be shallower than your sump pit. You can't overdig the sump pit or you'll have to buy extensions for your Screaming Demon. Now, we no longer use those tops that you see there with the big half inch inlets because bark and leaves and debris were a problem. But what we did instead is we drilled a bunch of half inch holes all through the housing. And I'll show that as we move through this video. I do recommend a quad pack, and I'll tell you why. We've learned that a quad pack air prunes any tree roots. So you're truly building a system that will last forever. One and done. Do it right the first time. This is a quad pack. You've seen the trees. We're, we're actually building right by a couple of trees, and I'm not worried about it. Because with all this void, these pipes, all that air void, roots can't survive in that. And as long as your sump pit for your screaming demon is deeper than your trench, you're not going to leave any water behind. So how can a root survive in four pipes with all this ventilation? It, it can't. It, it'll just dry up and fall off. So you can see how the guys are just pushing the pipes down into the sump pit. 
That's how easy it is to install the new Screaming Demon. We got rid of those hookups. I have some old footage that you're going to see towards the end of this video, and it'll show those male adapters, but we got rid of them. It was a nightmare. It was just too hard. It wasn't one size fits all. This is. This is one size fits all. Instead of worrying about, wow, I can't connect the pipe here, or I can't, I need the, I need this, you know, male adapter to be an inch lower or three inches higher. We were special, we had so many special orders and we were special making these things. And finally, we just went to these giant inlets. Look at that. These are over half inch inlets. And then we drill a bunch of half inch holes. So all you have to do is just run the pipe into the sump pit. That's it. And the water is going to find its way into the unit. It's a beautiful thing. No more hookups. It's so easy. One of the things that always bothered me when I purchased something and it was shipped to me is when there was some sort of assembly. And we worked really, really, really hard to get this to the point to where you can just drop it in and... <laughs> literally hook up your discharge line and you're ready to go so it is that simple the unit itself doesn't need any assembly that was a, a real big sticking point with me all right valentine just put in a d-box if you're new to the channel or you just happen to stumble on one of our videos a d-box is that's short for distrib distribution box. Easy for me to say. All right, so we like the solid covers. If it worked out beautiful, use the fence post for power, for uh, putting the plug on. That's nice. It's clean. It's neat. See, this downspout is just going to lay right here, and it's just going to flood the sump pit along with everything else, and the sump's going to take care of business. This is our Screaming Demon Micro Screaming Demon in very tight, tight, tight quarters. So this is our solid pipe. They're just going to cut it off right there. The water's just going to fall right into the sump pit. Done. We got half-inch holes drilled throughout our micro screaming demon I mean this thing is just ridiculous this thing is just absolutely sick we're gonna have a discharge line we're gonna be up on the fence and we're gonna take it out to the front they'll just end up cutting that pipe off the water will just fall right in we got a D box so we're not worried about debris in our sump pit we're catching it in the distribution box Yeah, that's moving some water. I mean, that's what a half horse pump will do. This is what it's been doing religiously. The discharge line is the only thing that you actually have to hook up to the Screaming Demon. The discharge line is just a screw clamp. It's a rubber coupler. You can just take a screwdriver or a nut driver and hook up your discharge line. Now, running your discharge line, there's so many tricks that we do, and we don't show them, not all of them anyways, because we're still installing. This one is ran down a fence, and we've shown that now a few times, and the driveway has natural slope. In the north, don't worry about your driveway icing up. It's only going to run during a thaw. By the time it's cold again, it's not going to be running, so there there won't be any problems in 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 that respect. If you are concerned, you know, right before dusk, if it's going to flash, you know, flash freeze in the north, you know, you can throw some rock salt down uh, to create a truly safe surface. Now, the reason why we're using the driveway here is because the where the property line was, there was no grass. They literally had 
cement driveway right to their property line. Otherwise, I would dump it in the grass and just let it slowly dissipate, you know, find its way into the street curb uh, gutter. You know, those those curb gutters just take the water right to a storm sewer. Now, if you live on a dirt road, you know, or a rural area, and you don't have the luxury of some of these things, don't worry, we deal with that too. There's always a way. There's always a way. If you're trying to get water out of your backyard and you don't have a fence, you could run it, the discharge line down the side of your house and just do it, you know, inconspicuously. I've actually put a discharge line inside a three by four downspout so that it looks like it's just coming off the gutter of the house. Now, notice how we ran this discharge line on the fence. This is sloped. I want you to know that. This has slope. We had to run it up out of the sump, out of the screaming demon, you know, sump pit. We had to run it up the fence all the way to the top so that we had slope going towards the front yard because the backyard was low, lower than the front. So, you know, keep that in mind. You just take the sump and you run that, that discharge line up high and then you get yourself some slope and, and you're, you're all set. Water runs downhill. So here's right, one of our micros. Of our micro screaming demon. Set it and forget it. So the downspout run with solid pipe comes here. The water just falls into the sump pit. Our yard drain pipe, which is a solid pipe as well with basins on it, that's to the right. That goes right there. And then our French drain trench pipe, the perforated, that goes right there. That creates that monster void at the bottom of your French drain that moves all that water. And that giant void that high octane creates. When you have a double barrel system or a triple barrel system, these inlets are so big, the water can just move from one pipe to the other as it balances and, and it seeks level as it's running down the slope of the trench. But right here, this is what we work so hard for. You know, we put all these half inch holes in the Boffman Tile Company's dual wall culvert pipe. Nothing stronger, you can drive anything on this that you want. We're going to basically just take a, a rake and we just hold those down and we're gonna just dump the stone in with the ditch witches. So this is this is the fits all works for any application. You don't need so many places to hook up to discharge your water. I mean, we were getting requests for so many crazy things. You DIYers build some wild stuff. So you know, you pushed us to run half inch holes on the sides, bottom and top. I mean, we got inlet all over the place. We increased the inlet. Monster inlet. We increased the inlet by 300%. So all you have to do is just run your pipes right at the bottom of the trench have your sump pit a little deeper, the water just falls in. And a visual like this really helps, I know. So there you guys go, man. Fits any application, it's super easy. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want to see homeowners struggling, DIYers struggling, we had to make it easy, easier. I know we have a fully plumbed yard drain system that you just drop in. And we're the first to do something like that. But we're working to make it easier and easier. And honestly, all summer long, you know, we put time in seeing what performed well, yet was convenient and easy for the homeowner, DIYer, to install, because not everybody has the equipment we do. So if you can dig a 25 inch hole, because that's what that is, 25 inches deep, that's the micro screaming demon. Now, if you need to be deeper, then you need our full frame. Our full frame is taller yet. I believe it's 30, uh, 30 inches tall. So just go to the full frame. 
but you want your sump pit to be deeper than all of your drain trenches. The yard drain, which is a solid pipe on basins, and the French drain, which is a perforated pipe surrounded by stone, and the perforated pipe just creates a giant void in the system to move more water. So our pipe moves far more water than stone. That's the point, and that's why we like running double barrels when we can. So, you know, we have D-boxes to catch the garbage. We have D-boxes on the downspouts. And then we just tied it into the solid pipe only. Everything runs to this sump pump pit. Everything. So it's a complete, you know, yard dewatering system. So you, in the uh, duplex model, you can set it up to where you have two pumps stubbed, and out you go. This homeowner is going to use this duplex model in this capacity. They're going to... You know, it's not will a sump pump fail, it's when. And that sump pump, you know, we have the very best sump pumps. We're actually special ordering our sump pumps so that they take more heat, they take more run time. You know, we're, we're putting everything, you know, through its paces so that we can deliver a better product to the homeowner. And, and we're there. I mean, this thing is just ridiculous. But the homeowner can just take that lid off and drop a sump pump in, say, in 30 years if this sump pump quit. So that's, you know, that's the thought behind that. Otherwise, just the single Screaming Demon would have been fine. And we do have a heater in here. So we got two cords coming out. We got the sump. And then we have the heater. Now, all our sumps come with a 25-foot cord now. I mean, that's a standard. You know, in yard drains, we just need it. All right, if you're in the south, if you're buying this and you're in the south, you have an advantage over us in the north. You could actually dig so that the sump pit of the Screaming Demon sat in a sump hole like I just showed in that video clip and I will show again. That is a huge advantage and you can only do it when you have a check valve because in the north we can't use check valves. You got to let the water run back in to your sump pump system. Whether you're in the north or the south you definitely have to have the sump pit deeper than your yard drain trench. If your yard drain trench for the slope that you needed ends up so deep that the Screaming Demon Micro and the Screaming Demon Full Frame, neither one, the 25 inch and the 30 inch tall, are tall enough, then buy some extensions. We, we sell them. They're in the store. We got 18 inch extensions, 24 inch extensions, three foot, and we do do some special order stuff. We've done some seven foot. That's the tallest we can actually really ship, to be honest with you. So remember, you want to get the sump pit dug out perfect. In the north, the bottom has to be flat. And why is that? So that when the system shuts down, without a check valve, water's going to flow back down into the sump pit. All right, in your house, you in your basement, you have a check valve. When it shuts off, there isn't that much water that runs into the sump pit. That's because the check valve is holding it up in the line. Otherwise, it would just keep coming back down, and then the pump would turn back on, and this would repeat itself until the pump burned up. So in the south, you guys have an advantage in the south. You can use the check valves. All right, so this is extremely important. I didn't show the D-boxes in any of the examples in this video. But if you have gutter downspouts running to your Screaming Demon, you want to put one of our 20-inch FDM D-box with a solid cover if you prefer, or if you want to catch water and put it where there's a pothole, you can use the grate. But you want to catch all debris before it goes to the system. Don't turn your Screaming Demon into a garbage disposal. These pumps can handle some solids, 
But if you continue to feed them shingle gravel and debris and leaves and just garbage, that's going to be a problem. And one day your system will fail due to that. So the guys just went ahead, lined the sump pit, put the fabric pins in to hold it back. We're going to surround this with stone, but I wanted to show this because it's ever so important. So my hand is on the bottom of the trench. This is the bottom of the trench, and we got 3% slope all the way to our sump system. It's really, really important that right here, see, look, see how this, so what they did is they dug the sump pit out deeper, and there's a step there. There's a step where this drops in. See, so we can empty the trench. All the water has no problem on a 3% slope falling into the sump pit. Of course, we'll hook up a couple pipes here of high octane, and with all the inlet that we have built into this, it's going to take in all the water and it's going to pump the trench dry. So this is extremely important when it comes to installing one of our sump systems. This is one of our duplex models. And I just want to do, make a quick video. All right, always dig your sump pump basin pit deeper than your trench. So I want to show you the step. So the bottom of the sump system is going to set right in here. Everybody always wants to know how much slope do I need. Slope is the accelerator. It's the gas pedal for yard drains. The more slope, the faster you're going to drain the water. But having said that, if you are level, just your entire trench is the same level, but then on the end of the trench, it drops down into the sump pit, you're going to empty that trench out. It can't hold water. Your sump pit is lower than your trench. So you don't necessarily have to have any slope. Your run might be ridiculously long, and you don't have, you know, that luxury of adding slope to the system. So don't worry about that. That's where a sump system like the Screaming Demon, that's ideal for a sump system when you don't have any slope to work with you're flat how you're going to get the water out sump system so the screaming demon now has solid covers on top we couldn't get the fine screen like the micro screaming demon and it no longer has those male adapters those white hookups because we designed it and set it up to where you just run your pipe into the sump pit and you don't have to connect them anymore because that's a nightmare trying to get it to fit perfect and we wanted to build a one size fits all and with all the inlet that we have built into this it's going to take in all the water and it's going to pump the trench dry so this is extremely important when it comes to installing one of our sump systems this is one of our duplex models and I just want to do making seed and installing it so that they have success with their drainage products. All right, so we ran this discharge line down the fence, and we gave it a lot of slope. We're in the north. We can't have these hold water, so we have to make sure everything is sloped. You want it to be sloped away from your sump pit. Why? If you're going uphill with your discharge line in the north and then the system turns off, all that water is going to run back down into your sump pit, turning your sump pump back on, and it's going to short cycle, and it's going to keep doing that and repeating that until it burns it up. So you want to do exactly what I showed earlier in this video, where you go really, really, really high up on the fence, and then it gives you a lot of leeway to slope it. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful textbook. Love it. The guys nailed it. You know, that way, only that little bit during the lift that's left in the line right there will fall back in. And we won't have any issues with it short cycling. Remember to put a heater in 
in November and remove that at the end of March if you live in the north. There's literally no maintenance to this system.